huge mistake buying this van. It was kind of like the worst deal on a vehicle I've ever gotten. I paid $4,000 for the van, which doesn't sound too bad for a Sprinter. But the thing is, I've had to spend like $2,000 on it so far. That is unacceptable. The thing is, the guy who sold it was a really nice dude. It was one of those occasions where you don't really feel like negotiating with people because you're just like, oh man, you're a genuine guy, you know? But when I got at home and found out that the entire cooling system was rusted to the shit and that the injectors were all blocked and that the glow plugs had stopped working, I was kind of like, let me show you what was wrong with this fucking thing. You see those cut out squares? They were just a bit of perspex that was screwed to bare steel where they had the ambulance lights and the rust had completely gotten through it. Like, I'm talking like, you see in there? And that was a bitch to fix, okay? I had to get a big flat thing of sheet metal, cut it out of square, buy this fucking crimping device, shape it to fit, then weld it, tack it. That definitely sucked. <clears throat> what was next? When I took the floor out, the whole floor was just rust. It was like an STI on an Oompa Loompa. Orange and flaky. I shouldn't make short jokes, I'm five foot two. This here, this here is the result of what you just saw. The previous owner snapped the antenna off driving under a sign or something, and he left it for two years and it just rusted through the whole roof. None of the doors worked, that's another one. This van came with a Jimmy bar because the previous owner said he took about five minutes to shut each door. As a result of that, what you've got here is the remainder of the mangled steel it was, it, was, it was a shitload worse, but I've managed to unmangle all the steel, put new bolts in there, refit it, make it all sort of work a little bit better. So now when you slam it, it shuts real good. So here's my handiwork. See if I can't get a good view of the roof, huh? That is a triple fan, two condenser air conditioning unit. Is basically the only reason I bought this fucking thing. Four turbines. And that's a condenser grill, or a cooling core, I guess you'd call it. That shit, while the engine's running, I get it. It's not really that convenient, but should be able to freeze the fuck out of me. I digress. Bad points, we're trying to pick out the bad points. Here's a bloody good one for you, check this out. Inside of here, if I can get it undone, is moisture. Now, I'm still not sure if the head gasket is bugged, or the fact that it was sitting without injectors in it for a little bit too long in the rain and all the cylinders filled with water. Just doesn't really explain the moisture in the oil. Another problem, that it was so corroded on the inside of the engine that the Welsh plugs had rusted through. So I had to replace two Welsh plugs. You're talking about a $4,000 van here too. Just think about that one for a second. Okay, that's more than a second, you can stop thinking. And right now, I would like to take the time to formally apologize for not recording enough of the beginning of the van conversion. We begin with part one. I hope you enjoy this episode. And if you can, please like and subscribe. But if you don't like... So the rust is so bad in certain spots, like for example, here, and here, and here that it was actually easier to get the whole panel replaced. So I went to Mercedes, and this is the panel that goes there. It was $340. Take the whole panel out, replace it, and then do some small spot welds to get it in there. I have to get the windshield out first. I still would have had to regardless because of the rust at the top of the windshield as well. Because there's like every time that the windshield cracks, millions of tiny little bits of glass kind of fly out and flick everywhere. And because I'm leaning all over the car because I've got nowhere proper to stand, I'm getting like heaps of these little tiny little like mega mega itchy fucking spots. It's not getting much movement. Yeah. So, I've got the seal out. I don't have anyone to help me get the windshield off and I don't have one of those suction cup things at my disposal. So, Let's just fucking give it a go, eh? Alright, get in there. 
I think the scariest part is that this shit fucking cuts you up really bad. We got the mirror off. Now we're just gonna try not to make too much mess in lowering it to the ground. So, we've got her off, and we've got this fucking super clear lens on now. It's so transparent that the atoms are actually semi-solid. They don't actually vibrate, so they don't create solidity, which means you can actually put stuff through the glass. This fucking stings like a motherfucker. So I think we've just got to get this black shit off. We've got this rust here, and it would crack sooner or later anyway. In fact, I think it might have already been cracked there. Just burning rubber and spitting at me. I gotta try something else. Penetrates to chemically destroy rust. Cleans and polishes chrome. Dissolves and cleans off rust. And cleans bolts. I had to cut out these whole fucking parts of the floor. Look at this, look at this. Oh my God, how the fuck could you neglect a car like this? And a Mercedes too. Look at these fucking holes, man. Actually, they were partly my fault. That black shit was where the underfloor caught on fire. I didn't realize it was on fire for a little while. And then I went under here and was like, oh shit, and blew it out. The reason I was so worried is because this is a big old plastic fuel tank. Hi. Today I make sure that the undercarriage of this van never rusts again. This is sound dead now. I've already got it all over my shit. Now that there is some finger licking good sound deadener. Mm. That ain't slow motion by the way. While playing with the sound detonator, I tried to make my own version of Maker's Mark Bourbon. Alcoholics get what I mean. I've literally got to put petrol on my face to get this shit off. Is it actually on my tooth? Yeah. Damn. Hi, honey. Another interesting thing to mention, I think, anyway, is the amount of fucking wires that was in the ambulance. This is a push door, not a pull door. Stupid door. Check this out. That was all in the ambulance. It was all to run the beep beeps and the toot toots and the wow wows. And now I would like to give you an imaginary t Lee tour of what I plan this van to be. Right here you will see a bench top. It will run probably all the way to here, where I intend on having something of a pantry here with a slide out fridge in the corner here. Angel, or Angel, or however the fuck you pronounce that European shit, make very good fridges, so I'm told. Let's move on, shall we? I'll probably have a sink roughly around here or some kind of shit like that, but essentially we will have an entirely long bench top along here. Now, on the other side of the world, that is the van, I will have a couch sort of dealy here. And I haven't entirely decided yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be going with that 
that, hold on, that mesh design that goes like that. And so the bed floor or the couch floor will pull out to the point where it hits the bench. That way with the full double sized bed that takes up this entire area, and Eve doesn't have to deal with me kicking her the fuck out of the bed because she'll hit the kitchen bench. So for the mesh idea, I went with that because that way I won't have to actually make the bed. If I have a slight slit down the foam mattress, it will actually still be made as I fold it back up into a couch. So it'll be the backrest down here and the couch sort of where you sit your bum along here. Eve can have the side where everybody's sitting their bum. I was thinking about getting rid of this, but I think I'm going to keep it just in case. This is a heater core. Um, this is where coolant runs from the radiator into the core and these fans will be ducted to wherever I choose to duct them or wherever I can fit them as a heater. Another one of those problems where the van sort of has to be running for it to actually do any decent work but I haven't decided to fuck it off yet because I don't want to chew into the second battery with electronic heating or cooling or anything like that. This will also most likely be where the big fat subwoofer goes. Oh shit. Hope that microphone didn't get in your way or annoy you too much. Because you can't have a house car without a significant amount of Alpine gear. Alpine is not paying me to say this, but I really wish they would. In fact, I'd probably just accept some 6x9s. Let's continue! I'm really bad at digressing. I'm good at it. Another thing that I think is quite important to mention is that this particular van, because it was an ambulance I think plays a part, is one of the models that has a sliding door on both sides. So, I've decided to keep this entire area here open. I'll have swivel seats with maybe a fold down bench, or maybe that comes off of the door window, or, or I haven't really thought about the ingenuity yet, but that can be my beat station. And I can stand up here and do my recording, and the computer will be here. So essentially, like this whole zone will be just for rapping, tapping, and fapping. I plan on having a big square water tank Probably maybe if I can fit 80 litres or something, I'll put it right here. Um, that will run through a 12 volt pump, probably under the van floor and then up to the sink over there, right? That way I can have the choice of either a small grey water tank or just extra storage space. I will most likely have overhead cabinets here, although there's not a significant amount of space. Even I are still very, very small people. Maybe some overhead stuff here too. I had a really good idea and Eve doesn't really approve of it, but if you can let me know in the comments whether or not you think it's a good idea, that'd be fucking great. What I wanted to do, as an emergency toilet, we wouldn't use it all the time, so just, just relax here for a second. As an emergency toilet, we would have a bucket here, cutting a circle out of here. You could have the bucket sort of lift up the circle and put the bucket in there and have it a flawless bucket. And then when you poo in the bag, you can quickly just tie a knot and then lift the bucket and close the lid. And it's because as soon as the bag goes underneath this floor, where it sits is in cradling inside the spare tire. So it wouldn't actually go anywhere, but it would be completely outside the van. He said, I'm not sleeping next to my shit bucket. Anyway, you can't negotiate. What do you do? So although you hardly know me, I hope that you can actually continue to join me while I do this bitch up. Because I do believe it's going to be grand. And by grand, I mean four fucking thousand dollars. Look, look, I don't regret it. I seriously don't. Like a project this big, it's what they call a character building exercise. That's what it is. 